In this entry, we'll be taking a look at Syndrome from Pixar's The Incredibles. An insecure megalomaniac, Syndrome was a conniving force of evil set on the public's respect and adoration. A villain masquerading as a hero to cater to his narcissistic need for worship. Originally known as Buddy Pine in his childhood, this innocent-looking boy appears to be a stark contrast from the fraudulent murderer we see at present. We aren't privy to the interim of the 15 years in which Buddy degenerates into syndrome, but if we peel back the layers of the hints that are shown to us, we might be able to arrive at some potential causes. If his name of syndrome were to mean anything, perhaps just like the common usage of the word, his alter ego is meant to represent a group of symptoms that are correlated with a disease or a disorder, which is somewhat fitting in light of his psyche. Apart from the apparent fact that Buddy is devoid of any emotionally healthy state and is likely plagued by certain mental disorders, it's suggestible that much of his psyche arises from a dysfunctional family situation with Buddy perhaps being an orphan or at most the child of a single mother, given that Mr. Incredible makes an assumption on her existence. In a world with a plethora of heroes to choose from, it's somewhat insightful that Buddy would be inclined to Mr. Incredible of all people. Sure, Mr. Incredible appears to be very accomplished in his field and is probably one of the top-tier heroes. But in all likelihood, beyond the obsessive fanboyism and admiration, Buddy's affinity towards Mr. Incredible could possibly stem from seeing him as a potential surrogate father. This is somewhat hinted at when Buddy tells Mr. Incredible that he finally figured out who he is, and tells Mr. Incredible the words, I am your ward. Looking at their physical appearances, this notion is supported even more. Both of them have some similar facial features, with the shape of their faces and their jawline being comparable, together with their similar but not identical shade of hair, with Buddy also choosing to style it in a manner that resembles Mr. Incredible's. As social beings, we tend to be naturally drawn towards people who look like us, as they provide a sense of familiarity. Given their physical resemblance, perhaps in Buddy's eyes, Mr. Incredible was seen as the ideal father figure of his fantasy, the one he never had and yearned for, hence his affinity towards him out of all the other heroes. So it could just be that Buddy's obsessive attachment to him ultimately stems from a gaping void in his own family life, with Buddy likely having an absentee father and hence looking to Mr. Incredible to fill that need. I find that to be the most plausible explanation for his devastated reaction from Mr. Incredible's rejection, an experience which he describes as one that tore him apart, as there are few wounds that are more painful than that of a rejection from a parental figure. In all this, Buddy is a boy who is very much confused, a state which he hints at when he tells Mr. Incredible that he doesn't know which side of himself to be true to. The fact that he rejects his birth name in favor of the alias of Incrediboy suggests not only an identity crisis, but again an intense need for belonging by attaching himself to someone he looks up to. It's also a testament to his reckless and foolish nature, as a barely adolescent boy has no business sticking his nose in the dangerous world of crime and vigilantes. Of course, there's also the appeal of the glory and fame, but I don't believe that this was Buddy's sole focus in his short affiliation with Mr. Incredible. After getting spurned by him, though, the rejection turned him cold and callous, with the former fanboy now detesting the hero he once idolized. The emotional void remains, albeit no longer fulfilled by a surrogate parent, but replaced by a craving for public attention and worship. In his staged attack on the city, in the brief moment when he was mistaken for another superhero, his distraught reaction reveals just how much the public's attention means to him. Buddy's rejection also produces somewhat of a sense of inferiority in him, the supposed notion that he has no inherent powers, which becomes a major source of resentment for him. But perhaps Buddy could be argued to indeed have an uncanny ability, not outwardly apparent in physical prowess, 
but low-key in the form of his genius intellect. As being able to produce inventions such as rocket boots in the 1950s is no small achievement, especially given his young age. Wealth and power are amplifiers of character, and when we see Buddy 15 years later, we find a man who has degenerated much in terms of morality. Outwardly, he comes across as a boisterous and grandiose personality, topped off with a sense of sass and showmanship, an overgrown man-child stuck in his delusion, as he is only ever seen in costume and never in any civilian identity. Beyond that, inwardly, Syndrome also appears to have a limited capacity to give and receive affection, a state which likely has persisted since childhood. In light of their body language, it could be said that Syndrome and Mirage are somewhat romantically attached. Given how Mirage conveys a look of satisfaction when Mr. Incredible hugs her out of gratitude, it's suggestible that Syndrome never met the emotional needs of his romantic partner. More than likely, this is a byproduct of Syndrome's self-absorption, a common recurrence throughout the film. In his grudge against Mr. Incredible for his rejection, his selective memory conveniently leaves out the segment where he was partly responsible for the damage to the train track and instead focuses on victimizing himself. Syndrome's selfishness is perhaps also seen in the fact that he withheld his best inventions from the world, possibly depriving millions of people of countless potential benefits. When we get down to it, Perhaps Syndrome's self-centeredness is attributed to his feelings of abandonment, the fact that he had to fend for himself as far back as he can remember. Since no one came to his aid, it's only fair that he returns the favor. As he tells Mr. Incredible in his monologue, you can't count on anyone, especially your heroes. With the underlying motive of exacting a vicarious form of revenge, Syndrome causes the demise of numerous retired superheroes, which also serves to prevent any competition from stealing his glory when he eventually masquerades as a hero. One major obstacle remains, however, in preventing his introduction to the city, namely that, in the current situation, all superheroes are outlawed. To mitigate this restriction, Syndrome would artificially create a threat so big that the public would gladly receive him. It represents the pinnacle of his self-absorption, as who can measure the extent of the damage that was caused in the name of his grotesque vanity, from the possible casualties to the millions of dollars in property damage. As fate would have it, Syndrome's selfishness and his callous disregard for life ends up becoming his crippling point. Mirage turns against him in disgust, concluding that he's a man who only cares about himself, an unloving and unlovable soul who deserves nothing but to be stopped. But beyond the foiling of his plan, we see that Syndrome's demise was caused by his inability to correct a past flaw. While he might be adept in making improvements to his robot, Syndrome leaves behind a potential hazard in the form of his cape. If the past examples of superhero deaths from capes weren't enough of an example, Syndrome has a direct experience in his short stint as Incrediboy. It was his cape that became the instrument of delivery that caused the whole debacle, and perhaps if he had retained some awareness of his part in the destruction, he might have made the necessary changes that could have spared his life. At the end, while Syndrome's actions were abhorrent, his endgame still bears some merits. Although his final revenge would result in the extinction of superheroes, it's noble in the sense that it would bestow advanced technology for the betterment of society. A double-edged sword, nonetheless, the benefits of which will never see the light of day, given his premature death. An obsessive fanboy turned supervillain, Syndrome was a narcissistic fraud, one who sought approval from a mentor only to be rightfully spurned, a boy who never grew up but merely aged into an immature man-child, one who abused the gift of his genius intellect for selfish purposes, an abhorrent villain whose need for public worship would be met at any cost, even if it endangers the lives of others.